It's a big one. Oh, I thought it was going to get away. Video is sponsored by Masso, makers of the Masso CNC controller. Eight hardware and software package to run your machine with no PC required. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today we're having a look at this here, the HBO4 USB pendant for Mac 3. It came with a set of instructions showing you how to connect it with Mac 3 and having had a wee play with it, it's really easy to set up. So let's take a bit more of an in-depth look at it. The pendant feels really solid in the hand. It's really good build quality. Comes with this nice fabric coated USB cable. It's quite thick in diameter and it's five meters long. That's more than enough to go right around my machine. It's really well finished. I quite like the look of it. It has an LCD screen on it, which we'll look at later. It's going to display our X, Y, and Z coordinates, as well as show us our feed rate and spindle override settings as well. It has a series of keys here that we can use for controlling our machine, as well as five programmable ones that the user can set up for themselves. It has an on-off switch here. It has a switch here for, which allows you to select your X, Y, Z, A axis, the spindle or your feed rate override. And of course it has here the MPG, which is the manual pulse generator for generating steps to move your axis backwards and forwards. Now on the back here, it actually has a battery compartment and there's nothing in it and there's no contacts in there either. That's because there are two flavors of this particular MPG. One of them is this one here, the USB cable one, and the other one is wireless. If you've got the wireless version of it, then you need to put batteries in it, and uh, you will have a receiver that plugs into the USB port on your PC. So the first step in the process is to plug the USB cable in to your PC. Now at this stage, Windows will go through and load up drivers, and in my case, it asked me to restart my machine. Now, I've already done that, so it will not ask me again for that. So what I need to do now is I need to start UCCNC. As you can see, I'm not using the standard UCCNC screen set. I'm using Jerry's 2017 screen set. Really excellent. I need to come up into settings and come down to configure plugins. If I scroll down to the bottom I'll find there's a plugin called the XHC HBO4 pendant. I need to set call startup and enable. I'll now close that and close UCCNC. Whenever you start a plugin you should restart UCCNC. I'll restart it, and this time it'll come up with another box for us to have a look at. And here it is here. This is the settings for the MPG pendant. We got here a window always on top. I'll just uncheck that. And here we have down here the five macro buttons, buttons one, two, three, six, and seven. I've already been through and set up mine so that I can zero the X, Y and Z axis, but I can choose another key here and then scroll down and choose from one of the many options that are available to put on the keys. And if I can't find what I'm looking for here, I can come across to here and enter a macro code to carry out some other function for me. I'm just going to minimize that window. So with that done, it's basically set up ready to go. I don't really need to do anything else. I can simply turn it on with the on off button here and figures appear on the LCD screen. 
you'll find that they will match the DROs on UCC and C. So I don't need to look at the screen to find out my position. Currently the machine's sitting in reset, so if I push the reset button, it'll go out. I can select an axis to move here, and by turning the MPG, it will move in one direction or the other. I can select another axis, and it will start moving that axis. Likewise, for the Z, up and down. I can select how many steps I want it to be, and now, it'll move a lot further in one hit. I have here a zero button. If I push that, it returns the machine to zero. And all the axes are zeroed. I have a rewind button to rewind my program if I'm running it and want to start again. I have a probe Z button here. I can take out my probe block here, put it on the table, hit probe zero, and it brings up my custom probing routine that I normally use. We have here a spindle button. If I push it, the spindle will start up, and push it again, the spindle will stop. I have here a spindle override. If I put turn the spindle on, and now I wind the MPG, I can increase or decrease the spindle speed. Also you'll see on the screen here that my percentage goes up and down for the spindle. Likewise, if I set this to feed rate, when I turn the dial, my feed rate percentage goes up and down, so I can adjust the speed on the fly. I have another button here that will zero the machine coordinates for my machine. Also, I've programmed up these three macros here to zero the X, Y, and Z working coordinates. So, X, Y, and Z. There's a step button here that takes me through the different step values. So, when I push it once, it goes into single step push it again, it does that at 10 times the rate, push it again, 100 times the rate, and again, 1,000 times the rate. I have a zero button here that will zero all my working coordinates, not just one at a time as these ones here. I've still got two more keys I don't know what to put on. All in all, it's a pretty good MPG. I'm quite impressed by it. Now there are some other settings in the pendant setup, and that is the MPG filter constant and the MPG speed multiplier. So if I set the filter constant to zero, it has quite a bit of effect on the motion. You can hear here that the y-axis is moving a bit more shudderingly than it did before. And that's because I've changed that setting. By changing, making the bigger number bigger, it makes the motion smoother. But it's also not quite as responsive. By setting it to zero, it's about as responsive as it gets. It does those moves and stops. If I set the number much larger, I'll set it to 13. The motion is smoother, but it just goes on forever after I stop it. And that really is a bit of a problem. I'm trying to find the right setting. Default is 5, so I think I'll just leave it on that for the time being and see how it goes for me. So the other setting in there is the speed multiplier. Currently, it's at 20. If I reduce it, the axis will move much slower, as you can hear there. So it's a multiplier 
for the speed. I think I'll have a bit of a play around and see which setting works best for me. And there we have it, it really was that simple to get this up and running under UCCNC. Simply plug it in and it virtually runs itself. Now one thing I have noticed is that when this is plugged in, this does not work. So how do I compare this to this? I honestly don't know. I would be happy with either of these here. I've used this one here for many years and it's worked really well for me. One thing it does have that this one doesn't have is a loop to hang it up by. That would be really good if this did, but it doesn't, so never mind. I'll have to find somewhere to sit it when it's not in use. I do like the LCD screen on here. Being able to see a position could be very handy without looking at the screen. That said, it's not really a major problem either way. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Maybe you'll get yourself one of these pendants for your machine. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my website, um, www.cncnuts.com. In the meantime, I'll catch you later. Cheers.